Hey, 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 what a busy day it is. And it turns out it's a day for exposés. As both uh, The Hollywood Reporter and Variety uh, both had some serious tea to spill. And we're going to discuss it. Hey, 80s model, thank you for gifting a membership. It's so nice to see everybody. It's been a busy day, boy. We're going to talk about that a little bit with the last story. Uh, just a reminder, though, Avatar drops at 3 a.m. My non-spoiler review is all ready to go. It will be up at 3 in the morning, uh, and then I'll have a spoiler review later in the day. Uh, hey, Popcorn Roulette, thank you for gifting a membership. Uh, my pleasure, Emilio. I will definitely stand up for Peru. The way it was treated in Madam Web was appalling. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, really, really good stories for us to discuss today. Just a reminder right off the bat, Please try to keep your comments and questions to the story at hand. Uh, and then at the end of each section, I'll open it up to your questions and comments. And then at the very end of the stream, as always, there's 10 minutes of Ask Me Anything. And if you want to ask me something that's a little bit different um, than what we're discussing, uh, that's the place to do it. Thank you for gifting a membership, Writer Boy. Very much appreciated. So it's a juicy stream today. Let's get started. All right, here we go. Uh, boop! Oh, I, poor, I covered up poor Margot Robbie. Let me fix that. She's like, how do I get stuck? She's getting a ton of money, so she doesn't care. All right, so what an interesting week for Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, of course, on Friday morning, very early, will have their earnings call for the quarter. Uh, Disney just had theirs uh, like a week or so ago. Theirs was explosive. Uh, so let's see what Warner Brothers has to say. Theirs is ridiculously early in the morning. It starts at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time before the market opens. Uh, usually these things are done after the market closes, uh, and that's when our next live stream is. It'll be on Friday, early in the morning, uh, after that is wrapped to uh, cover what's discussed. So hopefully Zazie gives us some stuff to talk about. But Variety stepped in today and, uh, you know, really, you know, said some stuff that I've been saying. You know, it's funny, the other day, uh, well, not the other day, like about a couple of weeks ago, CEO Brian Roberts of NBC Comcast Universal um, said he was not interested in buying anything, really. And he, you know, he, said, he didn't say that specifically. He said, I like the company the way it is. And I had a bunch of trolls on Twitter being like, oh, Grace, you've been saying that they're going to be purchased by, not only go up for sale in uh, April, but Universal's going to purchase them. And uh, sure enough, Variety reiterated that today because everybody in Hollywood knows it. Watch what they do, not what they say. Uh, Wonder, uh, Variety once again reiterated what I've been telling you for like a year now, and that's that in April, Zazie can put Warner Brothers on the chopping block. He can put it up for sale. Uh, and that NBC Universal is still considered the top, the most likely place to, to, to take that. Uh, and that's still the case, as was just confirmed by a trade. So, you know... A big lesson in life, you know, you know, you never know for sure which way things are going to go. And NBC Universal might not purchase it, but they are still considered the front runner. Uh, you know, Brian Roberts maybe wants to push that price down, right? So what I would do is, you know, just hold, just hang back. You never know for sure what's going to happen. Uh, and again, as I always say, pay attention to what they do. Well, you know, you see what I'm saying. You know, like a lot of times... Uh, what someone says publicly is, you know, try and think about why they would be saying that publicly. So uh, the reason that Variety brought this sale up is that they said that the reason that Warner Brothers is making all these sexy deals, like with Tom Cruise and Margot Robbie, is that they want the studio to look very attractive to any potential suitors. They want them to go, they want people to go, ooh, things are happening over at Warner Brothers. Although, man, I mean, look at the track record they have recently. Barbie, Wonka, well, we'll see how Dune does. But, you know, there's a lot of great movies coming out of the studio, although they did just fire all the people who were in charge of that. Uh, so, you know, obviously the new film team has to prove themselves. And by the way, those people wouldn't even necessarily stick around. You know, everybody that Zazie has hired, from uh, Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi to even James Gunn, you know, this might not be a long-term gig. Universal has to decide what they want to do. Uh, you know, or whoever purchases Warner Brothers uh, would have to make that decision. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot riding. That's why Superman Legacy is so important and why I think, while some, you know, you, we've been wondering why, they have, why Warner Brothers hasn't been more aggressive with the other films that James Gunn announced. 
And I believe it's because Zazie wants to sell the company. And if there's too much that they're stuck with, you know, I don't think that uh, any, any, any um, potential buyer would want to have to come in there with a machete and take out the DC division yet again. So let's see what happens. Uh, that's interesting, Popcorn Roulette. That's right. Maybe the Coyote versus Acme people just have to wait it out. Although once it's written off as a tax write-off, if they were to release it, the government would want their money. So uh, that really becomes a sticking point for the situation. All right, so not only were they talking about the Tom Cruise and Margot Robbie deals, both of them having deals with, you know, first look deals with the studio. I've explained to you what that means before. You get an office on the lot, they pay for your operational expenses for your company, and you have to give them first dibs on any project that you want to do. They can say they're not interested, and then you can shop it around to another studio. Uh, but then in that discussion, they said they really want Joker 2 to be successful. So they have decided to just throw money at it money at it. And in fact, it was revealed that they have thrown $200 million at the movie, that that's how much the budget has blown up by. So let's talk about that. So the first movie cost just $60 million to make. That was one of the most beautiful things about it. It was so inexpensive and cheap, and that made it a lean and mean machine, and it made it very easy for Warner Brothers to take a risk, and it was a great return on that investment, that very small investment. Uh, now, they said that part of the budget has gone to salaries. $20 million for Joaquin Phoenix up front, uh, $12 million for Lady Gaga. Uh, I, don't, I would wonder if they have back-end participation. If I were Warner Brothers, I would go to these actors, and I would say part of the beauty of this film and what allows you to be so artistic with it, we'll get to the musicals on a, musical aspect in a second, Dwight, but I would say part of what has made this be able to be something that could, does so well is that it's inexpensive. So would you please take a little bit less money uh, so that, you know, we can make this a lean and mean machine once more, and we will give you back-end participation. And if this makes a billion dollars again, you will be making bank. Uh, Tom uh, Hollander recently told a story when he was promoting uh, the second season of Feud. He said that he accidentally got Tom uh, Holland's uh, royalty check, his bonus check for Avengers, which obviously included... Uh, back-end participation. What a mistake that he got that check. And I can't believe he would ever discuss it. I mean, that's horrible. I mean, what a mistake on the accounting department. But Tom Hollander said that Tom Holland's Avengers Endgame check was more money than he'd ever seen. So there's plenty of money in the back-end. And so I think that I'm not saying these actors should be working for nothing, but I would think I could get Joaquin Phoenix, who, by the way, Joaquin Phoenix, I mean, I know he won the Oscar. He definitely deserves to get paid. But I think he should, I would say he gets, deserves, I mean, here's the thing. There's no movie without him. So he's got that going for him. But I don't think he wants to be in, in a flop. Or though maybe Joaquin Phoenix doesn't care based on some of the films that he's made over the years. But I would try and bring him down to 15 or 10. Uh, I'd be like, you got to give me some wiggle room here, JP. I mean, you're, you're married to Rooney Mara, who's uh, a gabillionaire. Come on, man. Give me, let's do 10 to 15. And then I'll give you significant back-end participation. So that's what I would try and do. And then with Lady Gaga, she's Lady Gaga, without a doubt. She definitely deserves to get paid. But also, she's coming off a house of Gucci. She hasn't worked in a while. She's never won an Oscar. She kind of embarrassed herself a little bit with the, with the Oscar campaign for uh, A Star is Born. So I'd be like, 12? Well, about, I mean, although Lady Gaga, although I think this benefits her so much to be in this movie. And Kay Walton, she does drive a lot of engagement. I would agree with that. Oh, yeah, she won an Oscar for singing. That's right, Nacho, but not for acting. I try to bring her, I try and give her 10, and I try and give, I don't think I can go below 10 for Lady Gaga because she's just too big a star. And so I try and do 10 for her and 15 for Joaquin. And then... That still gives Todd Phillips, what is that, down to 85? No, 15 and 10 is 25. So that still gives, seven, that gives an extra $15 million to uh, Todd Phillips and allows me to keep the budget at $100 million. I would not go above $100 million on this budget. And also, if Todd Phillips came to me and said, I want to make this a musical, I'd say, okay, well, then you can't go above $100 million in your budget. Uh, 
I would like it if you kept it at 60. I mean, you did it before for 60. I don't see why you can't do it again for 60. I guess I got to pay Todd Phillips too, come to think of it. I mean, I would honestly say to them, I see no reason that your budget can't remain 60 and I will just increase your salaries and that will get us up to 100. Or as Sensation said, 90. 90 to 100. And I'd say, you don't need it. I mean, I've seen the still photos. Look at that photo of them in like 80s getup or the photo of them on the roof in the, uh, doing like the dancing, right? Where's the money going? I mean, largely, I think, obviously, in people's pockets. And they definitely deserve to be paid because the first movie did so well. But are they getting paid perhaps just to scooch too much? What about back-end participation? I'm sure they are getting back-end participation. I have to say, Joaquin Phoenix's deal is very similar to what other major stars get, like Robert Downey Jr., 20 million up front, back-end participation. Robert Downey Jr., after the first Avengers movie, made like, I remember he made like something like $60 million off of that. Harrison Ford also has gotten insane paychecks. Although remember, they don't keep all of this money for themselves. They have a team of people that they have to, you know, they have taxes, they have a number of people that they employ, and their management and their representation and their legal team usually takes a chunk as well. Hey, Emmanuel, thank you for gifting a membership. So, uh, you know, you got, I think everybody deserves to be paid, but I don't think, I think that Joker 2 is not the same kind of project as another Avengers movie. It's not an Indiana Jones. I mean, it performed like one, but I mean, it's risky to think that necessarily will happen again. I just think it's just way too much. I, I think spending $200 million on Joker 2, I mean, maybe at the end Warner Brothers will be proven right and the thing will make 200, I mean, it'll make a billion dollars again. I, I would be delighted if it did. But the things that make me nervous about it are the musical aspects of it. What I know, if they kept that ending, they're nuts. Okay? And then also, I worry about Lady Gaga. I mean, she certainly has her fans, but I am a little bit concerned about how poorly House of Gucci not only was received, but how it did at the box office. And I do worry a little bit. That's right, Kay Walton. We haven't even factored in the amount of money they have to spend to advertise it. It's a lot. It's really just way too much. So uh, let's, see, let's see what happens. Uh, yes, that's right. You guys are asking about Ricardo's question. It would cost about $100 million to promote a movie like this. Uh, they're like, tweet like the wind, Lady Gaga. Earn your $12 million. Uh, but it's, it's just too much. Uh, all right, then the other problem, and that's right, it's also still rated R, Ben 10. Uh, Tiff says, do you think this means there is any action? Uh, there wasn't any action in the first movie, really, right? I mean, he got hit by that car, which was pretty amazing. You know, it was really, it was very well done. I loved the first movie. I thought it was incredible. I'm not surprised it made a billion dollars, but I'm very nervous. I think I applaud Todd Phillips for continuing to take risks, but again, I think he's lost the thread because what allowed him to take risks is that he kept his budget so low. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention, you might be like, why the hell, heck is Barry Keegan involved in all this? Well, he is also already in his birthday suit yet again. Uh, we'll do a poll over the question section of this. Uh, but he's on uh, the cover of Vanity Fair for their Hollywood issue. Uh, and uh, he confirmed that he is definitely returning for the Batman Part Two as the Joker, which I also am a little nervous about. I mean, he got a lot more fans with Saltburn, so I can see them wanting to keep him in that regard but I hope they change his look a little bit. There's no shame in realizing that maybe you went a bit too far and that you could maybe switch it a little bit. Hey, Cowboy Kush, welcome back. So, uh, but I hope that he's just one of many villains in the Batman part two. I hope that it's kind of like the long Halloween where they have a lot of villains because I don't want it to be a Joker centric film. Uh, I know that they just keep doing a lot of Batman. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of DC properties, although, um, you know, obviously, these are the ones that people really like so much. Uh, all right, let me do the poll, and then you guys, um, I think I'll do, what would you spend on Joker 2? What would you spend on the budget? Just the budget. We're not including advertising for Joker 2. $200 million? $150 million. 100 million, well, let's say, let's do the 90 million. So it's under, uh, I'll just do under 100. Under 100 million. You just don't want it to be three digits. 
All right, poly poll poll. That's right, CM. So by the way, anyone can vote in a poll. Only members can participate in the chat, but anybody can uh, vote in the poll. Uh, that's right. Thank you, Jad, for bringing that up. I've seen that Mickey 17 mess. It was crazy. We can talk about it for a minute. That Or Mickey or Mikey. I think it's Mickey. That's the Bong Joon-ho movie that got put on hold with Robert Pattinson and Steven Yeun. And it got a release date, but careful what you wish for, because now it comes out at the end of January in 2025. That is one of the worst release dates I've ever seen. That means they have zero faith in that film, because uh, it just will miss the Oscar window. Uh, to release a Bong Joon-ho movie at the end of January that stars Robert Pattinson and Steven Yeun, I'll tell you right now, it couldn't be that bad. Even if it's an awful movie, there will be such intense interest in those three personas that I would think that they would still do okay, that it would still be some interest. And I think you never know what the awards voters might like. Uh, it's basically Joe 87. It's about cloning, as somebody else said. That's right, 80s model. It's, it's the clone movie. Well, I, I, I just, it's just nuts that they put it there. So uh, let me see. So any questions or comments about this uh, Warner Brothers story before we move to the second story? And also don't forget to vote in the poll before it closes. Anyone can vote. Nacho Flores says it could not be that bad. Uh, what about Madam Web? But I don't, I, I think, I see where you're coming from. But, you know, Madam Web, Dakota Johnson's not a fit with that material, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Robert Pattinson and Steven Yeun working with Bong Joon-ho, there will be a core demographic that is just delighted no matter how it turned out. Steve, stop trying to fast forward us. We're almost done with this story. Marco says, Joker's Barry needs to change. It could really hurt the Batman too. I agree, Marco. I really think, I hope that it changes uh, a lot. Daniel Harati says, I think we'll get a Venice premiere uh, Mikey 17, meaning Mickey 17, meaning it will qualify for the Oscars. I don't think so, uh, because that's just too far from when that. I mean, why would you show people a movie? Uh, let's see, Venice is like in September, so three months for three to four months before it opens. I mean, you only take a movie to Venice and pay for that if you are running an awards campaign, and you you know. You can't. You could say maybe they were going to do a limited release for Christmas, but then they would have said that. They would have said we're going to do a limited release December twenty fifth. Ben ten. It's been very quiet about the Batman. I haven't heard anything about the Batman. I just know a little bit about the new Penguin show. Whenever that might get released. Tiff, I think Joker 2's release date is fantastic. It mimics the release pattern of the first film. And so, and it keeps it in that awards category, uh, category, uh, corridor, corridor as well. So I think that's great. Polk says, Lady Gaga has all her music fans. They will support her. Where were you guys for House of Gucci? You know, that's what I say every time somebody says somebody has a lot of fans. If I don't see it at the box office, it makes me nervous. Hey, Kevin, welcome back. Oh, Kirsten Dunst fan. That's cool. Your birthday coincides with Joker 2's release date. Happy birthday to you. I don't care, Bear says, if they're getting her to sing and act where others mo might require a vocalist, I can see 12. How much does it cost for her to do a gig these days? That's a fair question, I don't care, Bear, but it's not like she's Kate Blanchett in Borderlands, who I'm sure is getting paid a pretty penny. The issue here is that this is a very beneficial role for Lady Gaga. And so I think part of the payment is that she gets to be a Harley Quinn. Uh, you know, I think, uh, thank you for gifting those memberships, Sir Alices. You know, I think you have to think to yourself, well, hey, Lady Gaga, what if I didn't give you this role? Would you feel bad? Um, and if that's the case, Give me a break on what I'm paying you. So, I mean, I think she looks incredible. I'm just very, nobody wants to be in a flop. A flop won't help any of these actors. It won't help anybody associated with the film. It won't help the brand. So I think everybody needs to be on the same page in this not being a flop. I mean, the only time you don't care is if you know it's going to be a flop going in. And the only reason you're involved is to get paid. That's really, I think, that's the difference. Classic Bunny Librarian says, can Joaquin 
get another Oscar nomination again? Have people gotten nominated for a sequel before? That's a good question. I don't know if they have. I think he could. I think he could. I don't think he would likely win twice, but I think that, you know, I think he could be nominated again. Daniel Harati says that they, they have. Uh, Jeff Blue, it's so nice to see you. I remember your uh, avatar picture. And Maria, thank you for gifting a membership. All right, let me close the poll, and then let me uh, move on to the next story. All right, hold on. All right, what would you spend on the budget for Joker 2? 44% of you think it should be $100 million. That was my choice. 25% of you are willing to go to 150 whereas 22% of you feel it should be under $100 million. So the large, like almost half, think it should be $100 million. Then basically what's left is split between over and under, but only 7% of you feel it should go to 200 Because, I mean, I bless your hearts. I'm glad you're so excited. But, uh, yeah, it's just way too much money. Just way too much money. Lawson Horner, thank you for gifting those memberships. And Danny, thank you for gifting a membership as well. All right, let's go to the next story of the day. Hold on, here we go. Boo, uh, uh, boop. I'm not in the boom baby just yet. Boop. All right. This is a good one as well. I like this story. So another expose. I don't know. Everybody did a very poor job with timing today. Uh, all this stuff was released uh, in the middle of the day or a little bit earlier. But I got to tell you, everybody, what was it? The Nintendo Showcase today? Was that what was this morning? The Nintendo Showcase? Because that just, like, took up all the energy in the room. Thanks, Jeff Blue, for gifting a membership. I mean, it was nuts. It just completely overshadowed the Dune 2 reviews. It overshadowed the Borderlands trailer. And it overshadowed both of these exposés. Any other days, these stories would have trended. But they didn't because Nintendo Direct was just that big a deal. So I think that when they coordinate these things, they really there needs to be, like, a group calendar for the publicists, and they need to look at everything and be like, what else is happening right now? And they need to factor in video games because it just is killing Hollywood on social media. I'm glad you guys all like the lighting. Yes, it's very magical. All right. All right, so let me, let me get my notes up to where they're supposed to go. All right, so there was a whole bunch of tea spilled. They had a whole tea party over in the Hollywood Reporter about Marvel. Thanks, Tina. All right, so they said that they're retooling, quietly adjusting, right? And a lot of what they're doing is they're trying to change talent. They're doing a lot of talent. Uh, but, you know, I don't really know how I feel about the talent that they're bringing in. So here are some of the smaller headlines before we get to the mega headline. All right, so the Fantastic Four is indeed shooting this summer, and they've brought in Mr. Eric Pearson to polish the script, who Marvel feels is their script doctor, although we've never heard of the guy. Uh, they said what he's, what he's worked on beforehand is Thor Ragnarok. Oh, that makes me feel good. And also Black Widow. That makes me feel less good. If I were Eric Pearson, I'd be like, oh, yeah, he was, Ben 10 just pointed out he was fired off of Thunderbolts. If I were Eric Pearson, I'd be like, don't mention Black Widow, please, because that makes him look like he doesn't know what he's doing. So that to me is concerning. I don't really have any faith in him, his ability to rewrite anything. Uh, if they were like, you know, again, if they're like, okay, this Fantastic Four script needs to be rewritten yet again. And they're like, who should we get? Uh, how about the guy who reworked Black Widow? And you'd be like, but Black Widow needed to be reworked. I know some of you are saying it has good moments, but the movie didn't do great. It's not particularly well regarded. And, uh, you know, just because something has a couple of fans doesn't mean it's going to operate at the level that it needs to for these blockbusters. A movie that costs $60 million, right, can have a couple of fans. Or even better, a movie that costs $15 to $20 million can have just a couple of fans. But when you're spending all this money on these movies, it needs to have a lot of fans. And so I think that's a, a, a really big issue. Then there's, um, and I know, again, I know that it's hard. You know, you, you are uh, uh, somebody who, you're not, you're not responsible for the franchise, so you're just happy if you're happy. But think about how these things eventually, um, you know, have a domino effect and just ruin the franchise. And then, and then nobody's happy. Uh, Thunderbolts also has a new writer. Yet again, Eric Pearson's being, Eric Pearson's rewriting somebody else while someone's rewriting Eric Pearson. What's going on over there? And they hired the Bears showrunner, but not the creator, jo Joanna Caro, Caro, to rewrite. And then Variety said that originally everybody in Thunderbolts died. I'm like, well, first of all, I'm like, why on earth would you put that in the article? So I'm assuming that that's no longer the case. 
Then I agree, what happened to the beef writer, right? What happened to that guy who was already rewriting somebody else, by the way? Eric Pearson, I guess. So that's bizarre. Uh, and then also, you can't have everybody die at the end of Thunderbolts. Then it's just Suicide Squad for reals. I mean, it's one thing to be inspired by Suicide Squad, but it's quite another for it to just to be Suicide Squad, right? Like, that to me is nuts. So, yeah, and don't kill off Yelena Belova. Are you crazy? Are you crazy, man? I mean, and Bucky? Like, here's the thing. They're doing all these fancy moves, but why isn't Zemo in the movie? Like, everyone's like, why isn't Zemo in there? Like, they could write the best movie ever written, and we'd all still be like, but Zemo's not there. Because you have, not only is Zemo in the original Thunderbolts and started the team, but Zemo, you have a great Zemo that everybody already loves. He's standing right there. He's in government custody. He's perfectly set up to join the Thunderbolts. So that's going to just never, it's just going to be like, like, it'll just haunt this movie unless they fix it. It's just nuts. That's not even the big headline. All right. So those are like the little headlines that came out of this story. The big one was buried so deep that in fact, at first I missed it until one of you sent me, you know how there are some Twitter accounts which just go in and requote all of the articles and get much better engagement than the source of the news itself, which must really kill those trades. Uh, but somebody sent that to me and it says Avengers 5 is getting a new title. And I was like, what? Because it was buried in this whole paragraph about what a mess the Kang situation was. And I just, the paragraph was so long, I was like, forget it, man. I don't want to read that. I'm happy for you or sad that happened, as the saying goes. But yes, Avengers 5 is dropping the Kang Dynasty title. Uh, it makes me curious. What is it going to be called, right? Like, that would be interesting. I've said many times, let's just skip to Secret Wars. And I think that's, I hope that's what they do. It should definitely skip to Secret Wars. I think that that's what everybody wants. I don't see any point to bring in a whole new extra chapter and make us wait longer for what we want. Like, I think that's a big problem with Marvel these days, making everybody wait for what they actually want. I think that's one of the reasons that Deadpool and Wolverine is doing so well, because people actually want that. You know, instead, usually we're like getting stuff that we never asked for. We're like, well, I don't care. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just move up Avengers Secret Wars, which is what they should do. They already teased Secret Wars, in fact, in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. But what was interesting to me is that they already said, they said, you know, the, the source was like, whoa, hold on, hold on, Hollywood Reporter. We didn't drop Kang Dynasty from the next Avengers movie because of the court case that Jonathan Majors found himself in. We were already moving away from Kang because of how Quantum Mania performed. Really? I thought that was mighty convenient. In fact, it occurred to me that they might be doing that and setting that out, putting that out there to try and protect themselves from any potential lawsuits from Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors, I think, could sue for lost revenue and say, uh, you know, you know, I don't know what kind of deal he has. Uh, I mean, he was found guilty, which would certainly not help his case. But I think if they can say it has nothing else to do with the case, and also some people are still very much in Jonathan Majors' court. So while that is a divisive issue, nobody can deny that Quantum Mania underperformed. So they can say, hey, that's why, that's why we're doing it. And so nobody can really be upset with us for that reason. So it's probably also a PR spin. And I don't blame them because some people, I think the Jonathan Majors issue is, is very uh, prickly. Some people really, really still believe in his innocence. Um, and so I can see not wanting the film to get caught up in that. You know how you, know how you get, not, get caught, not get caught up in that? You don't change it to something else. You get rid of it and you bring in Avengers Secret Wars. And then nothing, nothing happened. You know, nobody took that space. Nothing was taken away from anyone by someone else. To me, though, I included a picture there of Kevin Feige with the OG Avengers because I think that is the most important thing that Kevin Feige has to get right, and that's the Avengers lineup. That's what he should be more concerned about. And I think one of the problems is that he has not introduced enough popular new characters to create a new team of Avengers. Uh, you know, the characters that they'd hoped, you know, I think their mistake was, now that I think about it, this just occurred to me while I was talking to you, I think that it was a mistake to try and guess who the new Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America would be. I think that they should have just waited to see who the audience sparked to. 
you know, Ben 10, I love She-Hulk and Moon Knight, but I don't think they're, uh, I think they're very divisive characters. I don't see, you know, really being as big as the first Avengers couple of movies were. So, uh, I, I think it's really tough. I think it's really hard. I don't know if he has a great Avengers team, to be honest with you. I mean, I wish he could, I think they shouldn't have gotten rid of, you know, Tony, Steve, and Natasha. I mean, it certainly made Avengers Endgame one heck of a ride. I know you guys are all saying Wanda, but, you know, I don't know about Wanda. I love Wanda. Love Wanda. But, um, I think I would put Wanda on there. You know, I'm a little bit put off by some of Elizabeth Olsen's recent comments. I'm like, whoa, if you don't want to be here, I don't want to force you to be here. But maybe, you know, so who said Spider-Man? Let me give the credit where credit is due. What's Daredevil going to do on the team besides get killed in the first five minutes? I guess Hawkeye survived. So why not Daredevil? That's hilarious. Somebody said Spider-Man. I don't see it. Uh, ben 10 said it. Oh, and Rashad. Okay, so yeah, Spider-Man. And you know who else? Wolverine. Right? Especially if it's Avengers uh, Secret Wars. Hugh Jackman Wolverine. You put Spider-Man and you put Wolverine on the team and Wanda and Wanda. Now you're cooking with gas. That's a really good, and Star-Lord. I agree, Ben 10. I agree. Hold on. Okay. That's starting, I'm starting to sound pretty good. Starting to sound pretty good. All right. Uh, the guy, Ty, Loki, he's a kind of a villain, and also right now he's sitting in that chair. He can't do it. He can't. Uh, all right, so uh, that was fun. All right, so, uh, and also it's no secret, as they said in the article, that... There's less content this year, but I don't know if it's because Marvel is rebooting or whether rebooting or whether or not it's because they just are delayed because of the strikes. And, you know, can they fix these things? I'm a little, I'm still nervous about some of the talent that they've brought in. Uh, yeah, you're right about Shuri and Captain America, Sam Wilson. You can't have, I don't think you can have an Avengers team without Sam Wilson. Hmm, I'll have to think about it, because now our team's too big. Hmm. How many people was that on the original team? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's always a couple add-ons, but six are the major ones. All right, anybody have any questions or comments? Adam's fear, I, we don't have space for Eternals on here. Oh yeah, what about Shang-Chi? Ah, there's too many characters. You see, this is the other problem. I'll add this to the conversation. It's so many characters. If they had just focused on introducing a couple of characters and giving them secondary movies that were good, then, you know, you would have had a better situation with the team. You wouldn't have had people feeling their character was left out because you'd only have the people that people wanted. That's just too many. It's just, I think that's another issue. That's right, Thor is still around. I don't think we need Hawkeye again. All right, any questions or comments? Oh yeah, Danny, what about Captain Marvel? No, I'm, I'm, there's no way she's gonna be on the Avengers after what happened with her movie. I mean, she's super powerful and all, and I feel bad about it, but I'll put her on the list. Uh, Jake Van Noren says, how long should Secret Wars be? Secret Wars needs to be like Avengers Endgame, you know, close to three hours with tons of great fight sequences. Uh, and I'm worried about who they're going to hire to direct it. They don't have a director on that one yet, right? Do they? Um, I don't think they do. Secret Wars, um, you know, the Russo brothers were very good at action sequences. You know, no matter what other issues they might have had, that Kevin Feige might be annoyed that they're taking the credit for the MCU when it was good. 
uh, they're still very, very good at action sequences. They understood what a comic book movie is supposed to deliver. Any other questions or comments? Hmm. All right, not Michael Bay, not modern art history. No, no, that's a lot of explosions. Poke, yes, someone else mentioned Sean Chi. I've put him on my list. I'm going to think about this. Lawson says, I think people will scream misogyny if Captain Marvel isn't on the lineup since she was a big part of Endgame. But I think they would have until the Marvels came out. Now it's like, oh, come on, man. Let's, I think I'd much rather go with Wanda and She-Hulk. Odile, hey, Odile, it's nice to see you again. Says, could Deadpool set up MCU Wolverine for Secret War? Uh, for sure. That's what I was, I've heard that's what's happening. I wouldn't be surprised if Deadpool and Wolverine leads directly into Secret Wars or sets it up or teases it. You have a strong tease for that. All right, let's move on to the next story and then we'll move on to the Q&A. All right, story number three. Boom, baby. Uh, oh, that's right. What about the Young Avengers tiff? Don't make the Young Avengers. Just, again, it's just, it's, I think Young Avengers should be a series, not a, not a movie. Uh, Frankenstein says, why not bench the Avengers for now and focus on the X-Men? You're, 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 you're preaching to the choir. Although I do think they have to make Avengers uh, Secret Wars because they need to use the Fox, uh, Fox characters while they can. Uh, okay. All right, story number three. Wiki Nomad, I agree. Loki and Wanda, have, they've literally benched their, their best characters. Uh, agreed. Oh, that's right, Mandito. Jurassic size, boop. Or in other words, as we like to say with the, the streams, boom, baby. Hey, Stardust Warrior, welcome back. So late yesterday, uh, they hired a new Jurassic World director. After David Leach left on Creative Differences, uh, again, I'm like, what creative differences could David Leach have? Uh, but Gareth Edwards swept in there. He really went in there and he said, oh, I'll do it. And apparently he met with them at Universal for like a whole week. And he impressed Steven Spielberg with his pitch. And they were all like, this is the guy. So he got the deal. And as I tweeted last night, <clears throat> I love Gareth Edwards. I interviewed him for the creator and I loved that movie. But I wouldn't have picked him for this. I think he's not commercial enough. And some of you were like, some of you guessed that what I, uh, that was what I would say, but you, and some of you were like, but who cares? You'll like this Jurassic movie because you like his work. Now, I know that you liked Rogue One. I liked Rogue One, too. That's, in fact, my favorite of the um, Star Wars movies. Uh, and, uh, ooh, what was I going to say? Oh, and it made a billion dollars. Rogue One made a billion dollars. However... Gareth Edwards was pulled off of that movie and had to be completely redone by Tony Gilroy, as Marco just pointed out. So you can't, I mean, unless you're hiring Gareth Edwards and Tony Gilroy, uh, I don't really feel how you can under, think you're going to get another Rogue One. I would also say, as Jad just said, that I don't think his Godzilla was particularly good. I didn't think Godzilla was very good. And I loved the creator, but boy, was that a bomb. Huge box office bomb. So I don't trust Gareth Edwards' commercial instincts with filmmaking and storytelling or casting. I'm just, I'm re I mean, maybe he'll have no say in casting, but that would be unusual for a director to have no say in casting, uh, particularly when they're brought on so early. So oh, look at Gap. Gap's like, Godzilla 2014 was good. But again, how many people, let me look it up on Rotten Tomatoes. Let me see what it's, let me look up its cinema score, okay? Let's look up the cinema scores of Gareth Edwards. This is what the general public thinks of his work. So the creator, let's see. I don't even think, I, did I even get a cinema score? A B plus, the creator got a B plus, okay? That's not too bad, but his box office was awful. Godzilla in 2014 also got a B plus. And then Rogue One, but he's not totally responsible for that. That got an A, because it was so good. But again, he didn't totally do that. Then if you look at the Jurassic movies, I know a lot of people think they're not good. But Jurassic World got an A, and then the follow-up movies both got A-minuses. 
So people liked them. The only ones that got lower than an A score were Lost World, you know, two, Jurassic Park two got a B plus, and Jurassic Park three got a B minus. Yikes. So a B plus would be a significant problem for this. So I just feel like while well, he's probably gonna make a very inexpensive Jurassic World, uh, I don't, you know, Universal's like, we're gonna save some money, boy. Uh, I worry about how much money they'll make. Uh, and that's what I wanted to bring up, uh, the Dune 2 reviews. I was really surprised because Dune 2 is pretty big on social media. Uh, I tweeted about it after I saw it. Tweet did very well. So I was feeling maybe this was going to blow up as a movie. But the reviews today uh, from all the YouTubers have underperformed. It's not, it does not have the interest of a big hit. Now, I'm not saying we can't be surprised. You know, like we're often surprised by Universal movies. You know, Universal movies are like, they, they come in like a predator from the side, right? Like a sniper. And you're like, what? Where'd this big, huge success come from? But I'm just, i really surprised that Dune 2 didn't, you know, didn't make a bigger splash today. I mean, if you look at the view counts on all the reviews, you'll see they're lower when, where, than where they usually are. Yeah, we're a week and a half out, but if this was the huge, huge movie that it was supposed to be, people would be very curious in these reviews. So I'm getting nervous again about how it's going to perform. Uh, and again, it might do very well out of the gate because all the super fans will run and see it. Uh, although Marco's saying it'll have legs. I don't know if it'll have legs. Um, luckily, nothing big comes out. Oh, Kung Fu Panda 4 comes out the weekend right after. And then there's a little bit of a break until March 22nd with Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, I think, will probably do pretty well. Um, but I'm really nervous. Let me ask you guys if you plan to see Dune. Poly, pole, pole. All right. Are you seeing Dune Part 2? And the reason I bring this up with this story, okay, is because I feel like Dune 2 is an incredible film. So even if Gareth Edwards delivers an incredible Jurassic World movie, this type of movie just isn't something that does well with the masses. That's where my concern is. Because you can't get a better movie than Dune 2. Yes, multiple times. Yes. Opening weekend. No, not in theaters. Uh, we just do yes. Just yes. Yes, we'll see it. Yes. Uh, yes means like yes, we'll see it. Uh, once. And then no, not in theaters. And then no, not at all. Okay. There you go. Anyone can vote in this poll, by the way. I don't care, Bear points out that Jurassic Park has fans as a franchise. And that's true. That does give them a little bit of a, a, a safety net. That's right, Mr. Magic. That was an Erica Jane quote for the sniping from the side. You're right. MM92 says, hi, Grace. Your Dune 2 review has convinced me to see it. I literally fell asleep during the first Dune. But your review got me excited. I'm so happy to hear that. You know, it's funny, if you look in the comments on that review, some people insist that everybody loves the movie. And yet it's funny, in the very same comment section, to see other people say they didn't, didn't like it, and they fell asleep and they hated it. So it's crazy to me. Like, people are just so sure in their conviction. But you don't understand, when I'm making comments, I'm looking at all your comments. All of them. I'm taking a look at the big picture. I'm scouring the comment section. I'm scouring social media. I'm scouring the articles. I'm seeing how much interest there is. You know how you can tell how much interest there is in something? How many articles and videos are made about it? Because people are rewarded for making videos and articles about it, so they make more. You know, if people don't make a lot of videos and write a lot of articles, it's because they didn't get enough clicks the first time around, so there's no point in continuing down that road. So that is crucial to understanding that. Adam Sphere says he can direct, but someone else needs to write for uh, Gareth Edwards. Maybe, but again, I worry about does he make the right commercial choice with the shot? I definitely wouldn't let him write, but he's not writing. David Cope is writing, who is a real hit or miss himself. Oh, Cowboy Kush says, by the way, your hair and that Dune 2 review is phenomenal. Thank you, Cowboy Kush. I work very hard 
on the hair. It's a journey. It's a struggle. It's a daily struggle. Let's see here. Dancing Dog 60 says, Dune 2 was too slow for me. All right, let me see what this poll says, and then I'll ask you what you thought of Dune 1. Okay. And be honest. Okay, uh, 47% will see it at least once. That's good. 19% will not will see it, but not in theaters. 18% will see, only 18% want to see it multiple times, but that could be enough. And then 14% of you aren't interested in seeing it at all. That's right, Tiff. The press tour for Dune has been phenomenal. I'm very impressed with it. Zendaya, right for what she did with that robot costume, brilliant. Raphael says, has Villeneuve ever delivered in box office? No, he is not. So I think that, you know, we're going to talk about how he might be different from Nolan if Dune doesn't deliver. Um, and it's interesting to me because they're so close. So the question is, where do they differ? What makes Nolan commercial and Villeneuve not commercial? Or Villeneuve, as some of you are saying. All right, so here's the poll for what you thought of... Oh, not the super sticker. Hold on. Right. Um, start a poll. What did you think of Dune 1? Loved it. It was pretty good. meh, and then hated it. All right, and again, anybody can vote in a poll, not just members. Anyone can vote in a poll. You just have to click in the box there, cast your vote, and let your voice be heard. Kay Walton says the difference is Batman. That's true. I do think that doing Batman and having that comic book property just really helped him a lot. I also think that Nolan really can tap in for some reason into the male psyche. Guys just love Nolan's work. Uh, it's interesting, as poorly as he writes women and depicts women, he really knows how to like just really, really connect to the male psyche. Maybe he should direct the Ken movie. <laughs> hey, Wesley, thanks for joining. Uh, let's see here, who said sci-fi isn't that commercial? Uh, Atomsphere. Well, that's true, but I mean, Alien did really well, so it can be commercial if it needs to. Hey, Sabo2, thank you. Justin Bocci says, I've enjoyed Edward's work, so I'm excited to see what he does with another blockbuster. Yeah, I'm not saying I won't like it, but I worry about, you know, I don't think from a business perspective, I think it's a bad idea. Mary says, what chances does Dune Part 2 have at the Oscars considering the early release date? I think it's so exceptional that it had the, I think it has a chance. I think that... Uh, Dune Part 2, certainly in the craft categories that it won for the first movie, and then also that Mad Max did so well with. Adam Sphere, of course Alien did well. Why do you think they made so many of them? No studio does a lot of stuff just for fun. You know, nobody there is like, we sure like these Alien movies. Let's just keep making them anyway. And I got to say, you can really see the difference in the directors between Ridley Scott on the first Alien and what James Cameron did with Alien 2. Maria says, is Dune 2 a movie that you would rewatch? I forget the first one. I'm going, uh, hey Landon, uh, thanks for joining. You know, Maria, I actually have tickets to see Dune 2 again opening weekend. I want to see it again and I want to go with my friends. So I'm going to be seeing it again. So yes, it's definitely a movie I think you could see again. Uh, let me close this poll and then we'll do the ask me anything portion. Okay. Uh, Sabotooth says option number five tried to watch but fell asleep I only have four categories I'm sorry all right so 32% um, of you only thought it was pretty good but 30% loved it right behind so that's good 29% said meh and then only 7% hated it so 70% didn't love it so I'm telling you guys you know now, I understand this is not scientific, but that's fine. Wiki Nomad, poll who's hotter, Timothy or Austin? Depends on the role, Wiki Nomad. Come on. Hilarious. All right, let's do the Q&A. All right, Q&A time. You can ask me anything that you'd like for 10 minutes. Let me keep an eye on the time. It's 6, uh, 5.56, so until 6.06, .06, you may ask me anything that you would like. Mika says, is Nick P Pizzolatto's career over? Uh, for those of you who haven't heard, Nick Pizzolatto, Pizzolatto 
uh, of course, created True Detective. And he's been going around really trashing the new season, even though uh, it's the most watched of any of the True Detective seasons. Uh, I think his career was already kind of over, but now it's definitely over, right? Like, uh, I don't know why he would do that. It's just crazy that he would not be supportive of his own franchise. Let's see here. Another Wanda stand says, Hi, Grace. I think Marvel should do their Young Avengers storyline in Miss Marvel Season 2 instead of making it a standalone project. Ah, another Wanda stand. So generous to other characters, even though you clearly favor Wanda. That's a great idea. I absolutely adore it. I love it. What a great idea. What's for dinner sensation? Well, let me tell you a little story. I'm low on food because I'm trying not to eat too much. And also, I have to eat special food, as you know. So uh, <laughs> I was going to make roast chicken, but I don't want to deal with it. And I don't have time. I'm going to be out the next two days a lot, so I'm not going to eat the rest of it in time. So I think I'm just going to have oatmeal with raisins and walnuts for dinner. While I watch Real Housewives, I'm so excited. It's going to be so great. They have dropped a trailer for the um, reunions, and they look so, so brutal. I can't wait. Uh, Dujon, I haven't heard anything about Henry Cavill being in the MCU myself. However, I think it's a really bad idea to put him in the MCU for him and for Marvel. Dwight Baldwin says, what's holding up the release date of The Boys? Seems odd to take so long. Uh, you mean Aaron Moriarty? I don't want to talk about Aaron Moriarty's appearance. I don't think that's appropriate. You know, I don't, it's not what I do. We, I mean, and let's just talk about her as a character. Um, as for the boys, uh, I think, you know, it's coming. Um, obviously, they have probably have to do a lot of VFX work and stuff like that. Uh, I don't want to rush it. I'm just very excited for it to come, though. I think it's great. We sure need it. I hope it doesn't wait to come out when until things are like busy. It's like you had this huge window when nothing was happening. Dixon, I read my digital comics on Comixology, which is an Amazon uh, uh, service. You can read them on the Kindle, and that's fine. It's not so bad after all. I'm still using the Comixology app, which still kind of works, uh, but that's how I read them. Rotoraxia says, rock, rock, paper, scissors. I'm going to go with Brock because I love the rock. Let's see here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Hold on. I missed a lot here. I'm coming back. Whoa, I missed a lot. Oh, my goodness. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. All right. All right, so Drago NYC says, Grace, I saw Anatomy of a Fall in theaters and it had pacing issues. Is your opinion why Hollywood is focused on these... In your opinion, why is Hollywood focused on these two-plus-hour movies? Uh, I don't know if I agree. I think maybe in theaters at home, I don't think Anatomy of a Fall had pacing issues. I think people really feel if they're going to the theaters, they want to get enough bang for their buck. Uh, and also, I think they feel movies feel they're competing with streaming, which is producing eight-hour movies. But I have to say, I wish there were more hour-and-a-half movies. I mean, I don't want them to all be an hour-and-a-half. But sometimes it's really, a, a, it's sweet to be able to still have a nice evening and go in and out, even when I'm looking for something to watch sometimes. Like it's nine o'clock at night and I'm like, I can't watch a two hour movie. What do you got for an hour and a half? And it's hard these days to find something. Jeff Blue says, have you heard anything solid about the rumored Midnight Suns film, building that team up? I haven't heard anything about it, Jeff Blue, and I don't think they should, I think Kevin Feige needs to focus. He just, it's too expansive, you know? I just don't think it's a good idea. I mean, he's telling, he's run out of stories, and that's from decades of comic books. Uh, Finn Moreau says, do you think the MCU would ever honor Wanda's Romani Jewish heritage and have a Romani actress portray her? Also, how likely would it be for Monica Rambeau to be made a member of the Avengers? I don't see Monica Rambeau being made a member of the Avengers anytime soon because of how, again, the Marvels performed in theaters. Uh, and as for, I, I, I think people really like Elizabeth Olsen in the role, uh, and they're not doing different varieties like DC does of the characters. Uh, so I don't see that changing um, anytime soon. But you can see that they made a very strong effort and succeeded in casting a Jewish actor to play Ben Grimm. Stardust says, how has streaming changed your YouTube experience? I feel that I know you guys better. I, I like it a lot. It allows me to connect with you more. It allows 
Streaming allows me to be even faster. I really like live streaming. You know, I was hesitant, but I I've come to really enjoy this aspect of YouTube. I hope you guys do too. Uh, LOL of the Rings, uh, thank you for gifting a membership. That's a great name. Oh, Lisa McDougal, I hope you enjoy Factor. Don't forget to get that discount that I offered on Movie Math on Sunday because uh, that's a significant deal. But I hope you like it. The food's quite good. Uh, Yoram says, happy eighth month anniversary. Oh, happy eighth month anniversary to us. Do you think Dune 2 will make a billion at the box office? No, I don't. I mean, we'll see. But based on how things are going so far, I think, like, I'm, I think I'm, I'm nervous. Uh, one second, sorry. Okay. Sorry. I don't think Dune will make a billion dollars. Uh, Richard says, Grace, did you see Kyla from Beverly Hills uh, on the Today Show today? Do you think this is a stunt between her and her husband for a storyline? I don't know. I think their stunt was making both of them look pretty bad, so I would be surprised. I don't think they're that good actors, quite frankly. I'm glad you guys all like my oatmeal breakfast. That's making me very happy. Or, as Ricardo says, porridge. Adam Sphere says, what is your favorite and least favorite studio? Oh, I'm not playing favorites. I love all the studios. Uh, let's see here. Ethan says, hey, Grace, I finally watched Mean Girls yesterday, and I loved the music. Thanks for your review. Oh, my pleasure, Ethan. I'm glad you finally got to see the movie and you liked my review. I thought that was a fun time. Fadagan says the boys season four is coming out in the early summer. Nah, I hope that's, again, you know, it could have really rocked in the spring. Uh, Vladdy says, any predictions for when Disney will announce a date for the Alita sequels? They're, I don't think they're going to make them, Vladdy. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry. Mm, I'm sorry. I don't think anyone's going to stop them from happening. I just don't think the movies did well enough to warrant them. Uh, Nick Warner says, great. Maybe a Disney Plus series someday. Nick Warner says, Grace, is there any truth to the rumor that Hayden Christensen is voicing Shadow in Sonic 3? Uh, I've seen that chatter. I can't confirm it myself, but I think that's a very good idea. Uh, and, you know, I'm so happy for Hayden Christensen if he is indeed starting to get more work because he's been redeemed by Ahsoka. That's right, Jad. No, nobody's paying attention to Invincible. They never should have split that season. They took too long to come back, and they never should have split the season in two. Ben 10 says, I'm doing an X-Men re retro, rewatching all the Fox movies, preparing myself for Deadpool and Wolverine. I will rewatch X2 again for sure. Ah, enjoy! I couldn't make myself rewatch the animated series, though. I mean, I just feel I know the X-Men so well. I was like, I just don't know if I want to sit through all, all it's just so much material. Jack, I'm glad you like my shirt game. Thank you very much. Mary says, could some of the Dune actors receive an Oscar nomination? I don't know. I think that might be a little bit hard. Not because they're not good, but I think it's just a little bit too far out. Oh, my goodness. Look at all these questions. All right, let me, uh, let me get through here. Um, okay, hold on. We're getting close to being out of time, so let me try and answer these quickly, Okay. Jake Fednoren says, where do you get your comics from and which comic had the Scott, Gene, and Emma front, uh, love triangle? That was X, Grant, uh, Grant Morrison's X-Men, and I read, as I said, my comics on Comixology. I'm a huge Garcelle fan, Mr. Magic. Hey, Alter Ego, thank you very much. Landon says, do you have a sense of how long before background actors are replaced? Six months, six years? What do you mean background actors? What do you mean about that? I mean, there, there are new background actors for every project. Uh, let's see here. Aiden says, hi, Grace. I was wondering what new Netflix streaming series you think will be the next Wednesday. Oh, I'm hoping it's Avatar, baby. Let's see. I hope so. I'm really nervous. Uh, let's see here. Man on the Moon reacts says, although, yes, some Beatles are more popular than others, truly having a star playing Ringo and George would carry the films. Maybe Timothy is George. I don't want too much Timothy Chalamet. Somebody the other day said that Timothy Chalamet, I saw this actually this morning with the, with the Challengers trailer. Someone online said they felt that Tom Holland, Zendaya, and Timothy Chalamet were a bit overexposed. And I agree. I think they should take a little bit of a break. 
The guy Taiwan says, think fast, your favorite moment from Ozark. Oh, that's a good one. Anything with Jason Bateman. I love Marty Bird. I think he's just great. I love his, how cold and calculated he is. Uh, let's see here. Tiff says, how excited are you for Invincible season? I'm not that excited, actually, to be honest with you, because nobody else seems to be. So uh, there's no really part. There's no party over there. I mean, I'm like the Bad Batch season three. Like, wow, did that fall on deaf ears today? Uh, so we'll see. I'll, I'll still cover it, though. Not episodically, but I'll do like a, 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 a review and then a spoiler review. Rashad says, have you seen the second trailer for The Challengers? I did. I thought it looked pretty good. I was surprised to see so many negative comments uh, beneath it. I thought it looked good. Stasis says, uh, hello, Grace. First chat here. Glad to finally be a member. Oh, I'm happy, too. I saw articles saying Paramount Plus and Peacock might merge as a streaming service. What does that mean for the Warner Brothers sale? It would be great, you know, because Zassi wants to merge with Paramount. So that would just work even better, you know. I mean, we're just a couple of months away from April at this point. I mean, we could be a sit we could be on the verge of a really big story that just transforms the Hollywood landscape. Maybe not for the better, but it'll certainly be interesting. Uh, no, no FX says, what are some of the biggest challenges facing the MCU with getting people back into theaters? I think they have to be, I think they need to become more focused. And I think they mean people to feel like they're invested again. Lisa says Mission Impossible 6 was way too long. Well, I loved every minute of it, but you can't argue with how it did. So, oh, look, Dre Films has Factor and loves it. That makes me very happy. That's great. I'm glad everybody likes my shirt. This was a little bit more expensive than usual shirts that I buy. Uh, you know, but I, I liked it so much and thought it was so interesting that I, I, I picked it up. And so I'm very happy that you guys, um, I'm really happy that you guys like it. because it makes me feel, whew, it was, it was a good purchase. James says, well, I think Vill Vill Villeneuve's movies are shot beautifully. His sound design and music choices tend to be too loud and aggressive. Oh, it is the same for Dune 2. It's very loud music, but I liked the music. I thought it was great. Cool Hive, light brown sugar is delicious, but I can't, I'm on a no sugar diet right now, or at least trying to really significantly minimize it. Like the raisins are a natural sugar, but I wouldn't put an actual sugar on it. Caroline says, hi, Grace, so grateful for you in this community. Ah, oh, me too, Caroline, I love you guys. I'm learning so much from you, studying to become a film producer. That's exciting, Caroline. Thank you for this fun and global channel. Followed you for years. Oh, that's so exciting, Caroline. That is a very nice career, very rewarding, and you get to really be in it. Watch the offer. You would be Miles Teller. And that's, as you can see, he's having a lot of fun, that character. That's right. Uh, who's just said that? Uh, somebody just pointed out that Nolan does really loud music, too. That's right. I don't know why Nolan gets away with it, and um, Villeneuve doesn't. Will R, I think Dune 2 does have competition. You know, uh, I think that, I think the Ghostbusters is competition for that movie. Uh, let's see here. Um, Carrot O says, love you loads. Why not Henry Cavill for Marvel? I loved him as Superman and the Witcher. Yeah, but I think, you know, Marvel doesn't need that drama of everyone being like, see DC, you never should have fired him. And then also, I think that, I'm really worried about Henry Cavill's box office. I would really wait to see how the, uh, the this Guy Ritchie movie does to see if he has if he is indeed a draw. Because right now, Black Adam, Argyle, Flop City, baby, and you know people are saying it's because Henry Cavill was barely in those movies. Well, fine, let's get a movie where he's actually in it and let's see how it does. Gilberto, I did see the trailer for Regina King's new Netflix movie. I think that looked really powerful. I liked it a lot. Hi, Diana. Brad Breston says, Grace, I appreciate all you do. Happy to be here. I'm happy you're here. Fast question. Do you believe that DC isn't going forward with Brave and the Bold? I, 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 so I can't, I don't think that they're cutting any movies just yet. I really honestly feel that they are waiting to see how Superman Legacy does. And he, somehow he got Creature Commandos out. Um, so we'll see. Diana says, I've been working a lot and missing the lives, but catching them afterwards. So glad I caught the tail end of this one. Ah, oh, me too, Diana. I'm glad that even though you haven't been able to watch a lot of them live lately, you're still watching them later. Uh, I don't have any, uh, new tea at the moment. Um, 
Not that anything that I can think of. Also, I told you, I gotta be careful. I can't get in trouble. I gotta be really careful. Let's see here. Movie TV review says, did West Side Story have 100 million? West, I'm not quite sure what you're saying about West Side Story, because West Side Story did very poorly. All right, I got, I got, I can't do any more questions. I feel so bad. I'm sorry. Um, I gotta get going. Let me do a quick shout outs. Where are you? What are you up to? Just really quick. I gotta go. Sensation is enjoying the stream while having some delicious little Caesar's pizza. Adam's Fierce says, I think it's going to be the longest Q&A ever. Oh, but we just finished it. Justin says, just getting home from work. Love from Idaho. Ah, oh, I love it. Mike Jones says, agree about the bub. Oh, you're talking to somebody else. Love it. I love that you guys talk to each other too. Tiff says, watching in Colorado, about to play a demo for a new game. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Brett Crandall is phone shopping in Kansas. Good night, Lisa. Isaac Lopez says, hello from McAllen, Texas. Crocheting like always. Crochet away, my friend. Adriana says, I am eager for poor things to release on digital on the 27th so that everyone can witness the truth. <laughs> we'll see. Some people will like it. I have close friends who surprised me who liked it. I was like, what? So, you know, uh, I can't get angry with them, so I can't get angry with you, but I, I found it very offensive. At least know what you're getting into. LOL of the Rings is cooking pad thai for dinner. While Alejandro is in Costa Rica wrapping up work and going to work out. Good for you. And Danny says, I love the stream. Thank you for your time, Grace. My pleasure. Thank you all for your time. All right, I really must go. I'm so sorry I can't do more shout outs today. Uh, there will be tons of Avatar coverage tomorrow. And then the next uh, live stream will be on Friday early to talk about that Warner Brothers uh, earnings call. All right, everybody, see you soon.